Halloween, 1759. On this day in this small village in Scotland, a boy is born in this very cottage. The boy would later become world famous Robert Burns, poet, romantic, and legend. This is where Burns' creative imagination started to form, thanks to his mother, Agnes. She would also delight him with traditional songs, and a distant cousin, old Betty Davidson, would create a world of ghosts and witches that would feature in much of his work. Hey. This is Alloway, and this is where Robert Burns grew up. Robert Burns started off his short life here. Around this place, there is so much history. So let me take you on a short tour of events and places that would have shaped Robert Burns' life and the way he decided to write in the future. Robert Burns spent most of his childhood working in the fields with his brother and father. When he wasn't in the fields, his father made him gain an education. In 1766, when Robert was seven, his family moved to nearby Mount Alfie Farm. Times were hard for the family, and Robert spent most of his time in the field, struggling to make money from the farm. Even with hard times on the farm, Robert still found time to write his first poem, Handsome Nell, for his partner in the fields, Nellie Kirkpatrick. Robert was an extremely romantic man, and through his poetry, he was very successful with the ladies. But soon he'd have to make a decision to work in the fields, or to write. She prophesied that later soon. Uh, thou would be found deep drowned in doom. Or catch with wo 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 uh, wo warlocks in the muck uh, by Alvey's old haunted kirk. The kirkyard holds the grave of William Burns, Robert Burns' father, as well as many of the local people who featured in the life of Burns. The kirk, which dates back to the 16th century, was built on the site of a much older church. The eerie surroundings of the kirk alloway evoke the strangest feelings in visitors. Little wonder that Burns set his supernatural tale, Tam O'Shanter, within its crumbling walls. After the death of his father, Robert's financial problems continued to trouble him. This contributed to his decision to immigrate to Jamaica in early 1796. But romantic complications also contributed to his decision to leave his homeland. With one child already to Lizzie Payton, Robert had met and suggested marriage to Jean Harmon, who would soon be pregnant with twins. However, Jean's father did not approve of the marriage and hounded Robert into the courts. Robert soon became infatuated with a young Gaelic woman, Mary Campbell, whom he secretly married. He asked her to immigrate with him, and she went to Greenock to await his arrival. Bones would never set sail for Jamaica, as events would happen that would change his life and Scottish history forever. Later that year, Robert succeeded in publishing the first book of his poems, the Kilmarnock edition. Burns eventually died on the 21st of July 1796. This is the Burns Monument. It was erected in 1823 in honour of his life. He died from a fever caused by a course of sea bathing in chilly waters. Robert Burns may have died on this day, but his legend will live on. It's a good life, this, you know, the farming, the plowing, uh, all the ladies, apart from when they get pregnant. You know what, I really want to be a poet, but it's hard to concentrate in these dreaming times, you know.